Okay, so good day everyone. So welcome again to our YouTube channel, the 641 Squad. So today we are going to discuss about the early method of detecting deception, which is a subtopic for uh, polygraphy or the science of lie detection. So before we proceed, please don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button and like and uh, the notification bell so that uh, you will be uh, regularly uh, informed about our new videos pertaining to criminology licensure examination so uh, let's proceed okay so early method of uh, lie detection uh, before we have the so-called uh, polygraph or polygraphy or other uh, scientific method of lie detection uh, there exists the so-called uh, early method of detecting deception but uh, when we talk about the early method of detecting deception the first thing that would come to your mind is the trial by ordeal so the trial by combat it is uh, the ordeal system it, it talks about the ordeal system when you say early method of detecting uh, lie or deception, we first thing that would come to your mind is the ordeal, the ordeal system. First and foremost is the trial by ordeal. So this is a form of detecting deception, why, while uh, where rather the person or the suspect is being subjected for a uh, uh, what do we call this uh, harsh punishment or brutal punishment in order to determine if the person is lying but again uh, because of the existence of our law this form of uh, detecting deception is not applicable to our criminal justice system anymore so trial by combat it is a wager of battle or trial by battle or judicial uh, duel so it's uh, usually done by by means of a duel wherein it was a method of uh, settling the accusation in the absence of witness so if there are no uh, witness anybody there was no any person who saw the actual commission of the crime this is the only method that they do apply wherein the complainant and the suspect will have or the two the party having dispute over something has to fought or hand in hand in a battle no kailangan nilang uh, maglaban since the dawn of civilization mankind has already uh, sought the way to distinguish what is truth from uh, lying in those individual who suspected of criminal wrongdoing so various techniques were used for the verification of truth as well as uh, in the detection of deception over the centuries so many of these are so cruel so ridiculous and most probably the winner on that uh, ordeal uh, will be pronounced or proclaimed to be uh, the innocent so that's the system of ordeal so trial by ordeal again as i said is this is a judicial practice during primitive times so whereby uh, as i said subjecting those person or persons or suspect to a uh, unpleasant uh, dangerous experience no so as to determine if they are lying by the word ordeal actually the word ordeal was driven from a medieval latin word which is de indicum meaning in english it is a miraculous decision but not all the uh, ordeal are uh, uh, what do we call this so dangerous there are ordeal which uses as well the so-called the uh, reverse psychology okay so that is the system of ordeal so these are the methods so ordeal of fire first in this test 
the suspect will have to uh, walk a certain distance, usually a 9 feet over red hot low shares. Okay? So, an innocent was sometimes established by complete lack of injury. Or, but it has more common for the wound to be uh, damaged and re-examined three days later by the priest. So, the person or yung tao lalakad sa isang mainit no? na apoy. Then, definitely, after the trial, titignan yung paa niya kung na, na, nagkaroon or nagsustain ng uh, malalang injury or if ever, hihintayin na magtatlong araw, then babalik siya upang uh, i-check ng isang pare yung uh, kanyang uh, sugat kung mga gumagaling ba or malala. Then, it would be uh, assumed that uh, in their time, on that time, it will be assumed that God had intervened to heal no the, the wound that was sustained by the subject walking on that uh, low share or red hot low shares so the next is the red hot iron ordeal so here uh, the accused will touch his tongue normally this is for the cases of lying no? so will he will touch his ta tongue to an extremely hot metal for nine times okay so sham na beses mong uh, i-dedicate yung yung dila sa isang mainit na metal yung bagong init na metal though if the accused does not burn and remain the same the accused will be judged innocent so in some country the practice is uh, instead of a hot iron they use a hot needle to tease the lips or deal of the needle in, in other term and once the lip bleeds it is an indication of guilt person Diba? Like for example, kapag nagsisinungaling ka, uh, ang, ang, ang reason behind doon sa red hot iron ordeal, eh kapag daw ikaw ay uh, nagsisinungaling, normally natutuyura yung laway. Pero kung hindi ka naman nagsisinungaling, hindi ka kinakabahan, usually magla, y y your tongue will release a saliva and then uh, it will, that saliva will uh, protect your tongue from the red hot iron so there would be an injury but not to uh, deep injuries hindi masyadong malala yung magiging sugat pero kung nagsisinungaling daw natutuyo yung uh, laway so uh, mapapaso ng husto yung kanyang dila that's the reason behind that one so this ordeal can also be done other than that touching of, of uh, your tongue to a uh, red hot iron you could also uh, done this through uh, carrying hot iron using your hand ng suspect. So, bubuhati niya yon, then maglalakad siya on a certain uh, feet, and then uh, they will look upon the hands of that suspect if ever it, it was extremely uh, injured. If it is extremely injured, they will presume that the person is guilty. Okay? So, next is the ordeal of hot water so this ordeal uh, or test requires that the water had to be boiled so pakukuluin muna natin yung tubig no? so you have to boil the water and then uh, the depth from which the stone had to be retrieved was up to the wrist of the of uh, one ac uh, accusation maglalagay ka ng bato dun sa kumulong tubig then uh, kukuha niya it is uh, needed na yung bato yung lalim rather ng kumukulong tubig or yung bagong kulong tubig or yung mainit na tubig is until your elbow kailangan mailubog yung elbow so normally the, normally this was done on uh, a cases in cases of theft yung mga kasong may connection sa pagnanakaw Okay, so the ordeal would take place in the church, sabe, with several in attendance, purified and praying God to reveal the truth. They they uh, inculcate here uh, that 
praying that would heal yung yung uh, nasunog or yung na napasong mga kamay nung uh, suspect. Then afterwards, the hand was bound and examined after three days, see whether it was healing or festering. So pagkatapos mong ilubog yung uh, kamay mo doon sa mainit na tubig, malamang malalapnos yon. So after three days, you're, you're, you will be asked to go back, then uh, they will uh, check if your hand are healing or if your the whole hands are until the elbow is healing because if it is healing most probably you have the meron ka raw uh, basbas ng Diyos na pinagagaling niya yung sugat ng isang inosente pero kung yung sugat mo lumalala no most probably you will be uh, adjudged guilty of the crime that you have committed okay so this was actually this kind of uh, a practice was done or practiced in uh, Brost, uh, Brostso, native in Bengal, India. So next is the ordeal of the cold water. So this uh, ordeal exists in 16th to 17th century. Ordeal by water was associated with uh, witch hunts. No, yung mga witch hunts. So an accused will definitely uh, sunk. And usually drowned was consider, uh, considered innocent. While floating indicate witchcraft or uh, demonologists develop uh, inventive new theories about how it worked. So some argue that witches float because they had renounced baptism when entering the devil's service. This ordeal has a pre uh, precedent in the code of Urnamu and in the code of Hammurabi under a man who is accused of sorcery no yung yung may mga witchcraft nga so will be submerged in a stream of a uh, aquated water if uh, aquated water then if he will uh, float most probably he will a uh, judge uh, innocent but i rather uh, he will be a judge uh, guilty but if he submerge lumubog magiging acquitted siya doon sa crime na na commit niya. Ang, ang reason behind nila doon is that uh, yung yung uh, mga devil daw takot sa uh, baptismo, takot mabinyagan, so they will float on the water. So that's why they committed the crime because a devil has been uh, possessed. I mean the body of a person commits the crime was possessed by the devil. Okay, so Next is Ordeal of the Cross. So in Ordeal of the Cross, the Ordeal of the Cross was introduced in uh, early Middle Ages by the church in an attempt to discourage judicial duels among Germanic people. As with the judicial duels and unlike most other ordeal, the accuser had to undergo the ordeal together with the accused. Okay? So meaning to say, the accuser and the accused will be subjected from that ordeal. So they will stood on either side of the cross and stretch out their hands horizontally. Parang yung pinapako lang sa cross, no, naka-extend yung parehong uh, kamay sa magkabila ang uh, cross. They will stretch their hand horizontally. Then one of the one of them to first lower his arm lost so, dapat patagalan to eh. Okay? It's some kind of uh, uh, a torture wherein they have to fight over who can uh, sustain long time na nakahang yung kanilang mga braso. Kapag nauna mong ibinaba at nangalay ka, napagod ka, nauna mong ibinaba yung iyong mga braso, so you will be a judge guilty of the crime. So, whoever wins on that uh, challenge will be uh, a judge acquitted of the crime or whoever loses, kung sino na unang nagbaba ng kamay, nangalay siya yung magiging uh, guilty doon sa crime committed but it was, record, uh, it was already abolished so as to avoid the mockery of Christ, no? Tin inabolish rin to after kasi nga parang, uh, but uh, uh, 
it was abolished because parang uh, nakukutya yung yung uh, pagiging sagrado nung simbo, simbolo ni Kristo no kaya ito inabolish so the next was ordeal of boiling oil so ano yung boiling oil or the ordeal of the boiling oil so this ordeal was uh, practiced in villages of India and certain parts of West Africa there are two version of this ordeal so in first version, the accused party are ordered to retrieve an item from a container of boiling oil with those uh, who refuse the task being found guilty. Okay? So, parang katulad siya nung uh, boiling water ordeal, but this time it's an oil, you will also dip your hand in a, in a boiling uh, oil. But if you refuse, you are guilty. If not, you are innocent. It's somewhat like a reverse psychology, but still harsh, no? Still harsh. So the other one is uh, the other version of this trial was both of the accused and the accuser have to retrieve an item from a boiling uh, oil, with the person of person or persons rather whose hand remain unscratched, being uh, declared innocent. Okay. So, kung sino yung medyo hindi masyadong na-damage yung mga braso or balat, so he will be the one to be a judge innocent on that uh, trial or ordeal. The ordeal of uh, rice chewing, or yung pinatawag nating uh, rice chewing ordeal. This is a method of detecting deception whereby the accused will be required to take a rice. It's, it's like a clergy, no? parang sa katoliko yung bread. No, ni, ni Cristo. If the accused fail to swallow even a single grain of concentrated rice, he or she will be judged guilty. Okay? So, pag hindi mo daw manguya, ibig sabihin, hindi pumapasok dun yung isang mabuting rice or bread which uh, the body was suspected to have possessed by demon. So, hindi niya talaga malulunok yun, sabi doon. So, pag di mo kayang lunokin, most probably you will be uh, a judge guilty of the crime that you uh, that was committed for you the next is the red i mean the red water ordeal or the ordeal of the red water it's like a food and drink uh, ordeal in this method the accused will be uh, required to run fast for 12 hours no 12 hours ang tagal noon ha so take a cup of rice kakain muna siya ng kanin and then maiinumin siyang dark water no dark colored water isang galon yung iinumin niya diyan and then uh, afterwards uh, pag sinabing uh, yung tubig for example yung tubig yung dark water kung hindi niya daw isinuka if if the person who take the rice and drink the water did not vomit the dark colored water is found to be guilty but if that person vomit that dark water kasi yung dark water ang, ang paniniwala nila doon meron yung masamang uh, spirit so pagka hindi mo daw yun na suka uh, you are guilty, you are evil pag sinuka mo naman you are acquitted okay e isang galon yun most probably baka masuka ka talaga ron at isang galon yung uh, tubig na yun okay Next is the test of the axe. This was actually uh, done in uh, Greece. The test of axe was uh, a suspended axe. No? Was spine in the center. So most probably, I mean, it will be spin in the center. Parang yung bote lang ito. No? Yung iniikot mo yung bote. Dito naman, the difference is that uh, the axe will be the one to spin. Now, on, on a group of people yan, ah, well, surrounding the axe, whoever was or when, whenever the axe stopped and whoever was on the place of the sharpened part or on the blade of the axe pointed, kung kanino daw natutok yung uh, blade ng axe, yun, siya yung guilty. So, most probably, sa kanya i-hahambalos. Uh, yung uh, axe 
na tumutok sa kanya. So, the next is the test of the candle or the candle ordeal. So, this was actually ordeal that was used in uh, Burma. So, in this ordeal, they used, uh, or rather, the accuser and the accused were each uh, given same identical candles and were lightened at the same time. So, sisindihan niya ng uh, magkasabay, magparehong size, parehong uh, itsura, pareho ng laki, then uh, magkasabay sisindihan. So, the candle burns the longest determine which the truth. I mean, who is telling the truth? So, kung sino man yung mas matagal na natunaw na candle, uh, siya yung paniniwala ang nagsasabi ng totoo. Okay? So, the next is the donkey's tail ordeal. But actually, uh, among all the ordeal, among all the type of ordeal that was used, this is actually an ordeal, the donkey's tail, is the one that uh, possesses a little bit of truth no in in doing or or in applying this ordeal because they use reverse psychology this is a method of ordeal where all accused person or even a person or persons will be instructed to select a cage of donkey no yung parang maliit na uri ng kabayo using a donkey's tail they will uh, strike the donkey and whichever cries first will be a judge guilty Papasok ka daw sa isang kubol ng mayroong uh, donkey, tapos kailangan hawakan mo yung uh, donkey sa likurang parte. Kung sino yung umingay, yung maunang sumigaw na donkey, siya yung uh, actually, or kung sino yung donkey umingay doon sa lahat ng uh, pumasok. Or kung isa ka man, kung umingay yung donkey, you will be a judge guilty. Okay? So, pero actually, in the donkey's tail ordeal, what they do there is that uh, they naglagay sila ron ng uh, lump block or uling sa may puwet or butt part nung, nung uh, donkey. So, kung ikaw yung, uh, yung uh, guilty person, ito yung reverse psychology doon eh. Kung ikaw yung guilty person, pagpasok mo doon, most probably, hindi mo siya hawakan para hindi uminga yung kabayo or hindi mo siya papaluin para hindi uminga yung kabayo. Actually, pag ginawakan mo yung uh, donkey na yon, maaari kanyang sipain. Di ba? Hindi naman siya sisigaw talaga, sipain kanya, patalikod. Okay? So, but the essence there is that, kung yung tao pumasok doon, hindi niya hinawakan, hindi yun sisigaw, or hindi siya talaga sisipain. Pag lumabas siya, this is the real deal in the donkey's tail ordeal. Pag lumabas siya ron, na wala siyang uling sa kamay, or lamp lock sa kamay, so, most probably, hindi niya hinawakan yung donkey. Nagsisinungaling siya, hindi niya hinawakan yung donkey. Kasi takot siya na sumigaw yung donkey. So, that's the real essence of that donkey's tail or din or ash. Nilagyan nila ng mga ash or uling, no, yung puwet. So, pag hinawakan, kung puma pumasok ka doon, sumigaw man yun o hindi, paglabas mo doon, uh, titignan yung kamay mo kung merong mga ash or uling. Kung meron, ibig sabihin, you are telling the truth, hindi ka takot, no? hinawakan mo talaga yon. Pero kung lumabas ka na wala kang mantsya ng uling or uh, uh, tawag na ito, ash, abo yung, yung mga kamay, so you, are, you will be a judge guilty. So the next is the hereditary save. No? save. So Dr. Hans Gross actually uh, mentioned this kind of ordeal in his famous book about criminal investigation in which beans were thrown into a sieve as the name of uh, each suspect was called. Uh -oh. How does this done or how does this kind of ordeal goes on or uh, executed? So the deception criteria were described as like, for example, if the bean jumps out of the sieve, ano ba yung sieve? Yung bilao. Di ba para kang nagtatahop ng, uh, ng bigas? So kung yung... Uh, bin daw na tinapon dun sa bilao uh, tumalon, palabas so most probably the owner of the name who pronounce is innocent but if the if the bin in the sieve remains the person is named as Steve for example, tinawag ka ikaw muna yung tapos pangalan mo tinawag, magtatapo ng beans doon sa bilao pagkatapos kung yung, yung beans tumalsik sa labas 
hindi nagstay sa loob, innocent. Pero kapag yung pangalan mo tinawag tas pinapon yung bila, yung yung uh, bin sa bila o nagstay, you will be a judge guilty and you are considered to be the thief. Okay, so the balance ordeal. The accused will lie. In this ordeal, the accused will lie in a balance scale. If the scale does not balance on the same side, the accused will be guilty. Ganun lang yun. Alam niyo yung siso sa Tagalog, no? Hihiga ka ron. And then, kailangan daw may balance mo yun. Pag hindi, pag mas mabigat yung sa parte ng ulo, or sa parte ng uh, paa, so guilty ka. So you really have to balance that uh, balance yung siso sa Tagalog. Kailangan mabalance mo yung siso. Ang explanation nila kasi ron, pag guilty ka raw, pag nagsisinungaling or kinakabahan ka, di ba namumula yung muka? So usually, umaakyat yung dugo sa ulo. So may hihirapan ka daw na magbalance kapag ka ganon. Kasi yung dugo umaakyat sa ulo. So may hindi mo siya mababalance. Pero kung normal yung tibok ng puso mo, normal yung lahat sa iyo, pag uh, test sa iyo nung balance or deal, most probably, kaya mo naman daw yung i-balance yung, yung uh, siso na yan. So, the next is Ordeal of the Curse Nate or Ordeal of the Blessed Bread. A priest puts a bread into the mouth of the accused. If the accused swallowed it, he, he was freed from punishment. So, pakakawalan siya kapag ka na, nakain niya yung tinapay. No? Kung uh, nalunok niya yung tinapay, isang buong tinapay yun, ha? Uh, ilalagay sa bibig niya, tapos kailangan makain niya yun, ma malunok niya yun. <laughs> yung malaking tinapay na yon So, if not, uh, he will be considered guilty of the suspected crime. So, the next is the test of the Eucharist. This was chiefly applied among the clergy and monks. When they took the host or yung hostia, it was believed that God would uh, smit the guilty uh, with sickness and death. Ganun lang siya, no? Kakain ka raw nung sagradong tinapay na yon and then uh, kapag or yung hostia na sinasabi nila, kung ano man yung host, host na sinasabi nila, then pag ikaw nagkasakit, or namatay, you will you are considered to be the guilty. But if not, uh, most probably you are considered acquitted of the crime that is being accused for you. So others naman believe that if the accused is innocent when given a poisonous drink to take them, I mean to take it, Angel Gabriel thou will fall down or will descend from heaven to prevent the accused from taking the poisonous drink. Ayan. Test of the Eucharist yan. Order of, uh, ordeal of the beer. It was an ancient uh, belief uh, that a slain dead could point out the killer. Yung namatay na. So, ang ginagawa dito, uh, it, it, this, it was practiced in England, actually. This, that was practiced in England. Wherein, uh, sa burol daw yan eh, kapag yung, yung patay, uh, in view of the witness, no, yung, yung nakikita niya raw, kahit patay na siya, tapos, ay, binurol mo, tapos dumala or lumapit yung, yung uh, perpetrator or yung asailan, yung dugo, yung, yung sugat daw na dinulot nung pagpatay ay bubuka at medyo dudugo daw ulit, no? as what have said here. So, magbibleed daw ulit yung sugat. So, most probably, they believe that the murder or the perpetrator or asailan is just nearby or baka nandyan lang or baka na, uh, dumalaw pa so it was actually the ordeal which was recorded by well by Shakespeare in Richard III Ayan. so the trial of wax and shirt ordeal no? so this ordeal was uh, done through uh, where in the process that the accused will dress with the uh, cloth covered with wax and walk barefooted ah, nakapaalang on a burning coal so it was uh, or if he was unhurt by fire and wax did not melt hindi daw natunaw nung dumadaan siya ron sa uh, nagbabagang uh, mga uling he will be considered innocent pero kung yung sinuot niyang wax na damit I mean damit na winox uh, 
natunaw yung wax, you will be, I mean, the person will be considered guilty of the crime. Ordeal of the Tiger, so actually this was practiced in uh, Siam, no? The accused and the accuser will be placed on a cage where there is a tiger, then whoever was spared by the tiger, most probably he will be the one to be considered innocent. Kung sino yung nilapa, siya yung guilty. Actually, ina nila dito yung yung uh, yung kwento sa Biblia, yung, yung sa tiger. Kung hindi ka lapain ng tiger, uh, most probably, uh, hindi ka raw, I mean, you are not a sinner. Hindi ka makasalanan kung hindi ka lalapain ng tiger. Kung ikaw naman yung nilapa, ay di, you are a judge the guilty. And that uh, is already your punishment, yung paglapa uh, sa'yo ng tigre. Then, uh, other countries practicing ordeal as well. So, we have the uh, Madagascar. Legendary authority practice trial by ordeal there. And then, supposed that criminal, uh, they, they, they are supposed to drink or swallow a poisonous fruit or drink. No? Fruit. Ang tawag nila dito sa fruit na ito is hindi po yan mura. No? Ang tawag natin dyan, tangena. Okay? So, it's, it's a kind of fruit like a bearing nuts. It, tangena is an indigenous name of the three species in uh, Kerbara, Manghas, in Madagascar. That's what, uh, that's uh, where you could find that fruit. No? This is a type of fruit that uh, produces toxic nuts historically used in trial by ordeal. Actually, maraming namatay dahil dyan sa prutas na yan. So, most probably, uh, this ordeal is to determine if the person is uh, uh, guilty or not. The suspect will drink or definitely intake such poisonous uh, uh, drink or fruit. Then, if they vomit, that fruit, most probably, they will be declared innocent. But, nung ininom nila, namatay sila, kasi nga poisonous, yun ay pinakaparusa nila, and they are considered to be guilty. Pero kung naisuka nila, nabuhay sila, so most probably, uh, they will be uh, considered innocent. Pero kung hindi nila sinuka, na, nanatili sa katawan, tas syempre mamamatay, kasi nga poisonous yan. So, yun ay pinakaparusa niya, then he will be considered guilty of the crime. But it was abolished later on by King Rada II. Okay. Borneo. So, the accuser and the accused were presented on a shellfish. Nah, that's shellfish. Play, uh, na nilalagay sa plato. An irritating fluid will be poured on the shellfish and uh, litigant whose shellfish move first was a just the winner. Kung kanino daw yung naunang gumalaw, na na-irritate na si Helpis, siya yung magiging panalo. Siya yung magiging acquitted doon sa crime na ibinibintang sa kanila. So, next in Nigeria, so what they, what they practice there is that a priest greased and cocks feather and uh, pierced on the tongue of the accused. Itutusok daw yung feather na yun. Then, if the feather passed through the tongue easily, the feather, I mean, the accused, was deemed to be innocent. No, if not, magiging guilty siya. So yung yung uh, balahibo na may uh, ng ng ibon, no? Or feather ng ng uh, cup. Itutusok 'yon sa dila mo kung kung uh, tumagos, inosente ka. If not, considered kang guilty. That uh, those are the ordeals, no? I mean, in uh, early method of detecting deception. So we will talk next uh, next video on the next video. Now the the uh, scientific. These are the traditional uh, medieval uh, or primitive way of detecting deception. So the next on the next video we will talk about the scientific way of detecting deception. Then we will talk about polygraph examination. Thank you for listening. So please uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell.